Welcome to another edition of Anglican Unscripted, episode 368, the Purple Edition. I'm Kevin Coulson. I'm George Conger. Today's February 6th, 2018. All right, George, <laughs> you're whipping out here. Normally we sit down and you have your regular regular I can't even talk today. Your regular clericals. Today you have a sweater on. Uh, are you in Lakanto, uh, Alaska? Uh, Kevin, I think the time has come to me to admit that I've gone native. You've gone native. It's, it's 75 degrees outside. I need a sweater. I'm cold. My wife, as we speak right now, is out playing mahjong. We're going to have dinner at 4:30. I have white shoes on. I have gone native. I have taken on the uh, culture around me. You have been assimilated into Florida retirement culture. It didn't take long, but it's easy to do. I remember visiting my grandpa for the first time when he was in Florida. He had a little motorhome, and every evening we went to the buffet. I liked the buffet. So I can see how addictive it could get. Um, last time we talked about your infection and flu update. We don't want to get morbid here with our audience, but how are you feeling? How's the leg doing? Oh, well, I'll survive. I feel miserable. I'm on uh, enough uh, antibiotics, narcotics, steroids. Uh, I should be looking like Arnold Schwarzenegger by the amount of stuff they're pumping into my body, but give it a few Give it another week or so, and we'll be fine. Well, that's good. Good to hear. Um, you broke the story. Now, for people who did not just watch the episode I recorded with Gavin Ashton, the story is women episcopacy uh, reaches the shore of Gafcon, uh, and it was a secret uh, consecration that only George found out about because he is a news hound, not... Not in regular style, but you were telling me you were just flipping through, uh, surfing the internet, looking at some of the pictures from the consecration uh, or voting of the latest archbishop there, and boom, you saw something that stuck out to you, and you did some investigation. Uh, tell me a little bit about how you found out about uh, a woman being consecrated bishop in South Sudan. Well, about two years ago, the Gafgan archbishops made an undertaking to each other. They would not ordain women bishops. Mm -hmm. A woman had run for diocesan office in Kenya. She had not been elected, but she came close. And Uganda is prepared as supportive of women clergy, and they were ready to start consecrating women as bishops if they were elected in the election. Sure. And the Gafcon primates gathered and said, okay, we're going to do a moratorium on this because the Nigerians are very strongly against it and other provinces are somewhere in between. Southeast Asia, though it doesn't, not part of Gafcon, doesn't ordain women clergy. And so you've got a bit of a spread and until they were all in the same spot, they were going to hold off. Well, about a year ago, I got a uh, message from one of my contacts uh, in... Uh, Uganda saying, I just heard there's a woman bishop in South Sudan. Well, I contacted the Archbishop of South Sudan and the Provincial Secretary. Never got an answer back. And I just kept hearing the rumors. But there's nothing on the internet. There's no announcement from... Now, if the Anglican Communion News Service knew about this, they'd certainly trumpet it to the, from the housetops. In, in fact, uh, had not uh, Archbishop Justin Welby just been there a couple times? He's been there a couple times. Mm -hmm. Okay, life goes on, and I keep hearing stories about women bishops. But I went through the list that the Lambeth, that the ACNS keeps of the diocesan bishops in Sudan, and there are no women on the list, and they're all, you know, I don't know where it could be. Well, I'm flipping through friends' Facebook pages of the recent House of Bishops meeting in South Sudan. That's the one that Foley Beach went to, and. I noticed that there is a bishop who has a matching purse and shoes. And I look a little closer, and she's wearing a skirt. And I wrote to my friend saying, uh, who was who the third person from the left in the photo? Not saying more than that, just asking, who is this? And I got a name. And from the name, I was able to do a search, and I found that a Catholic missionary society had put out a little announcement in their newsletter and then I was able to take about the name and the date, and I was able to take that and go to a third person, and they were all able to confirm that on December 31st to Saturday, 2016, Elizabeth Awat, A-W-U-T, was consecrated assistant or suffragan bishop of the Diocese of Rumbek in northern southern Sudan. 
and that's been kept secret. It has. Now, uh, we obviously know the, the thoughts of GAFCON on this, and we know all the archbishops and, what, and their thinking on this. Why do you think they had to hide it? Well, I can't. I've heard various causes. One, the Catholic News Service that reported this consecration had a direct quote from Daniel Deng Bull saying it was one of my finest accomplishments to have a woman bishop in South Sudan. So the archbishop was all in favor of it. In talking to my Sudanese bishop contacts, they have no idea that this is an issue. Mm -hmm. If and when, if they go to GAFCON this summer and people basically say, why did you do this? They're going to say, what's the issue? What's the problem? Because it's not filtered out of the main office in Juba down among the bishops that this was a no-no. So... I've heard stories that the Archbishop of Sudan happened to miss that particular meeting when all the GAFCON primates said they weren't going to do this mm -hmm. because it was on the agenda and he couldn't make it. That's right. Now, whether this is passive-aggressive behavior or whether there is truly a lack of uh, uh, discussion, the GAFCON secretary in Sydney seemed genuinely surprised by this news, and they're basically trying to figure out well, what are we supposed to, what do we say, what do we do, and they're consulting with the, all the archbishops. And here's a fun question for the ACNA. Foley Beach was at this meeting where the photos were taken. Did he know and when did he know it? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> or, did they hide, or did they tell this, tell Bishop Elizabeth to stay home until Foley goes away? Uh, yeah, it's I mean, it is interesting. You know, it, it just became, uh, uh, what, how would we Watergate this? Uh, uh, Episcopate, something like that. Well, the so, but the deed is done. She's been in office for over a year. Mm -hmm. This guy has a phone on the South Sudan church. Now they've got other problems. Their recent election for new archbishop is being challenged for Daniel Arch, Archbishop Daniel Dang is alleged to have uh, fixed the election so that his candidate was elected. And we have a story about that on Anglican Unscripted, but Anglican Inc. But I don't want to go too far out of this new bishops. Thing because this true, I mean, whenever we do a story about women bishops or women clergy in the ACNA, that generates tremendous amount of buzz and controversy, and we get all the, we get the thoughtful people coming out, and we get the kooks coming out. On get a lot this. of kooks. Lot and of kooks. a woman bishop really bringing out both, you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yes. Uh, because some people are wondering, is GAFCON finished? Is this, the, you know, for some people, this is the ditch they're going to die in. For some, for many of the Africans, it's like, see, in East, the East African revival, which gave birth to the churches in Uganda, uh, Kenya, South Sudan, Tanzania, women have always played a very, very large role. And so they were one of the first churches to have women clergy and women, the issues that say the Nigerians have or the Anglo-Catholics have, are totally off the radar for East Africans. Can that group hold itself together? Will there be a GAFCON meeting in Jerusalem? Will this woman bishop be not invited? Or if she is invited, will then some other bishops not come? My first Lambeth conference in 98, we had five bishops from Madagascar refuse to come because there would be American women bishops there and New Zealand women bishops. Um, are, I don't know what's going to happen. Well, I don't think this is going to affect GAFCON as much as we think initially, because I think they're going to be able to separate themselves by saying there's no such thing as a GAFCON province. That's what I hear from uh, Gavin. But I do have to uh, wonder, you know, is there accountability now within the primates of GAFCON? Can GAFCON primates be accountable to one another? Um, and why are we finding about this after uh, Archbishop uh, Dung has uh, stepped down, and you know th this happened under him. And Kevin, we would have found out about it if not somebody taking you know selfies with friends. Mm -hmm. There's been no. There's, to this day, the ACNS has not released an announcement. The Sudanese Church has not responded. Um, we only know this because I had nothing better to do. Yes, <laughs> you were bored. And I actually look at my friend's <laughs> Facebook posts. I look at those pictures, and I'm scanning them, and I'm re storing them in my memory. 
All right, let's move on to a different topic. Uh, the Southeast Asians uh, are sick and tired of the uh, Church of Scotland. I'm saying that wrong. Uh, and have decided, hey, there's going to be some schism. Uh, tell me about that story. Well, the House of Bishops of Southeast Asia, uh, led by uh, Archbishop Moon Hing of uh, West Malaysia, uh, unanimously adopted a statement saying that because the Scottish Episcopal Church is unilaterally uh, going forward with gay marriage, we are in a state of impaired communion with them. Now, in the big picture, there's probably not all, you know, there's many, like 12 or 13 Scottish Episcopalians in total. That's it's correct. not a very big church. So uh, it's not really going to, it's not going to impact things on a day-to-day -day basis, but it, it is symptomatic of the fact that the wealthy approach of uh, live and let live, uh, you know, everybody can do what is right in their own eyes, is not going to work. No, that... Because here's, here's the funny thing, that the Chinese in South, Southeast Asia, it's predominantly Chinese, it's an Asian province, but it's, most of its leaders have historically been Chinese. Some of its past leaders, like Moses Tay, were very hard nosed. They were the leaders of the. You know, Moses Tay ordained uh, uh, John Rogers and Chuck Murphy. Under the under the people that followed John Chu and now Mo, uh, Moon Hing, they've been more circumspect. They've not gone all on board with GAFCON. They have they have their own issues, their own agenda. They're focusing on the evangelization of China. Um, but now you're forcing those moderates back into the conservative camp, which I don't think Welby intended, intends to do. We didn't talk about this in the pre-show, but uh, for the last a month or so, I've been reading articles about the Roman Catholic Church in China and changing <clears throat> bishops. I don't know if you've caught this at all where uh, the Chinese said, you can have bishops here, but we kind of want to put our our flavor of bishop forward, and you have to choose them if you want to have churches here. And so... There's something called the Chinese, uh, Chinese Catholic Patriotic Association. You, okay, you have it's paid official, attention. Uh, it's the official Chinese Catholic Church. And those bishops are selected by Peking, not by the Vatican. And in fact... Uh, Two of the bishops who were Catholic priests were invited to become bishops of the Patriotic Catholic Church, which is the Chinese Church, and they were excommunicated by the Vatican for becoming bishop. It's, it's akin to a Roman Catholic priest becoming an Episcopal bishop. It's a different denomination. Uh, same outfit, uh, yes. same title, <laughs> different denomination. Yeah. Well, Vatican Secretary of State has decided that they want to have closer relations with China. So the faithful Chinese Roman Catholic bishops, two of them are being asked to step down and make way for two Chinese communist-backed bishops, whom the Vatican will now real recognize. And well, Cardinal Zen, the former retired Archbishop of Hong Kong, is going around saying, look, this is a kick in the teeth to all of the people who have suffered and died under communist oppression that you're not going to make nice with the turncoats not just nice but you know approve people who for all intents and purposes may not be fully catholic uh to be bishops and uh you know that worries me that rome so quickly agreed to this now we see all the time where uh apple uh in order to make money will agree to the terms of uh uh, China, Facebook will do the same. They'll have their censorship and you can't search outside websites and stuff like that through their applications. But to see the Roman Catholic Church just so quickly sway and say, you know, maybe it's not such a bad idea to, to have a partnership now with the uh, um, government of China. And the other thing, we, we can't be too harsh on the, on, the, on the Vatican on this point too because the Anglican and the Protestant world is just as compromised. They, there's a Protestant equivalent to the, uh, it's the China Christian Council, where during the Cultural Revolution, all the Protestant churches were either killed or yes. amalgamated into one body. Oh, that's correct. And its leader was an Episcopal bishop, Chinese Episcopal bishop, uh, K.H. Ting. And Ting uh, basically was a turncoat, but he's also honored as having kept Christianity alive. 
in China by some people. Now, here we're 20 odd years since liberalization, and we still have the Chinese harshly controlling the China Christian Council. So when Justin Welby or Michael Curry go, to, or even John Chu or Peter Akinola go to China, they meet with the CCC, which uh, the Chinese Christian Council, they don't meet with the underground church leaders, the house church leaders, uh, who represent nine out of 10 Christians. They do. Now, and the other thing that we've heard and we can't prove this, is that there are a number of Anglican bishops still in China. We've heard that the Korean church has a bishop working among Korean refugees in the north. We've heard that there are still underground Chinese Anglican bishops who survived the Cultural Revolution and have kept the apostolic line going and are waiting for one day uh, the waters to uh, recede and they can come back and claim their places. You ought to see what happens to communism. We're certainly uh, seeing China's become hyper-capitalist uh, with their uh, communist background. We see places like Venezuela completely falling in other socialist countries. Um, it's a different time. Uh, information and social networking has uh, extended the influence of the church to ways we never, ever thought of before. Um, but I'm not... And, and for the Anglican, let me just finish off with sure. one little... Sure, go ahead. Anglican. The uh, Archbishop of Hong Kong um, is also president of the Anglican Conservative Council. He's also a member of a Chinese communist body, uh, the advisory parliamentary group. He has been very harsh with pro-democracy demonstrators in Hong Kong, saying, cut it out, behave, follow the orders from Peking. So our Anglican leadership in Hong Kong is seen by many young people and certainly by the pro-democracy movement as being allied with the communist oppressors and when they see anglican visitors from abroad come they see them meet with the official communist backed church leaders they don't see them meeting and greeting the leaders of the true christian churches in china and now the vatican has essentially gone the same way of disowning their own loyal of faithful bishops, many of whom have spent decades in prison to recognize turncoats who are supported by the Peking government. It's a difficult time for being Christian. Very difficult. Jeez, uh, the witness there. All right, George, that is a good episode, whatever it was. You'll have to tell me. Uh, <laughs> sorry, it's my second recording today. I'm a little off, um, but it was fun anyway. I'm Kevin Carlson. And I'm George Conger, and you've been watching 300, episode 368 of Anglican Unscripted.